Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to episode 31 of the Sharpshooters Podcast. I'm your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brinsky Sharp, Mr. B Sharp on the ones, the twos, the threes, the fours, and the fives and the sixes. Uh, appreciate everybody coming to the show tonight. Um, we don't have everybody in the house tonight, but we still got some of the guys in here. But before we bring them up, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate all the support. Almost about to crack that uh, 450 mark. Still on the road to 500 subscribers. So make sure y'all hit that subscribe button and keep showing love to the pod. Without further ado, there they go, Jen. There they go. There they go, ladies and what gentlemen. Up, you already know. Shout out to my main man, Tez, in the house, ladies and gentlemen. What's the deal, good people? Yeah. Ready to get this started. <laughs> and Mr. H-Town himself, this, the test is legend. You already know Mr. what's Dave up, man. More like, man. What's going on? Been back. Yeah, the boy been working hard for the Atlanta Braves, man. He working hard. Shout out to the Braves, man. See, there you go. Braves, get a man a raise. Six figures. <laughs> and a company car. And a sweep for me. Let's get it. You gotta think about yourself oh, sometimes. You can't you can't be thinking about you can't be thinking about your boys all the time. Sometimes so you gotta, gotta think about yourself. Oh. Yep. Yeah, get right, man. Get right. There we go. Right. Company I man. Company right. man right there. Gotta get right. Sure, we trying, we trying to we trying to get to the skybox. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna be there one day. But oh, without yeah. further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the most highly anticipated shows of the year because why we have Iowa versus LSU, ladies and gentlemen. Last night was a historic night for the women's game, I feel like, and I wish it can be more like that in the future. And I hope it's going to be more like that, but we'll get into that later on. But last night, uh, what can I say, man? Caitlin Clark with the legendary performance doing what big time players do in big time games, they show up in big moments like that. And which I consider they had Iowa winning, which I still don't know why. Like to just start off with, because LSU has the more superior team without a doubt. I think. Oh, uh, they can probably go. We go Caitlin, then we can just say Angel. Then right after that, we can probably name about maybe about seven or eight LSU players before we can name an Iowa player. That's just how superior they are to them, which I consider an upset by Iowa last night. And so I ain't without further ado, I'm just gonna let you guys just start off telling me what which I thought about the game. Um, and then right after that, we'll talk about like the post game and stuff like that. So either one can go. Let's go first, Ted. Yeah. So uh, uh, that game was as advertised, man. I don't know what what else you could ask for from a women's basketball game, but uh, it definitely delivered on the hype. Um, uh, I saw. It's. I mean, I w- I want to commend. Uh, What's what's Iowa's coach name? I can't think of her name. But uh we well, are I want to commend her, dog. Like they they ran they, they she called a perfect game. For for what LSU is and for how they they they're able to operate, she called a perfect game, bro. It was they basically ran them to death. Like the pace of that game was so crazy. It was up and down, up and down, up and down. Oh, uh, and for them to still come out with the victory, uh, mainly Caitlin, you know, you got to give her up flowers, 41 points. I mean, what else What else can you ask for from your, your, your star player? You know what I mean? Uh, silence the critics. Uh, and, and then even Angel, you know, when she had like 17 and 20. So, so the stars in this game definitely showed up. Um, Interesting stat. I think I think LSU actually out rebounded them by 
like double. I think it was like 50 to 30 something, almost double their rebound total. Uh, which is crazy to think about. Uh, when you see that, it's tough. It's tough to win a game when you can't get off defensive boards. I think injuries had like 10 offensive rebounds. They they out rebounded them severely in that game. And, and for them to still win, like that says something, man. That says something. Uh, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else what else I could expect from a women's basketball game other than that. I mean, it, it delivered on a promise. Uh I thought they should have got the ball to Flage a little bit more. I thought she was probably the one who looked hungrier offensively. She uh she had some moves in there that was like, man, yeah, she wants it. Uh, a lot of people wanted her to guard Caitlin Clark. I don't think it would have mattered <laughs> who was guarding her. Uh, every time she had a hand in her face, whether it was Haley Van Lee, Angel Reese, or whoever, she was knocking them down. So I don't think it would have mattered who guarded her. Um, yeah, other than that, man, I, I don't know. Like I said, it, if you if you was looking at this game and you was disappointed in this game some way, like I don't know what else you was looking for from a basketball game. Star showed a high scoring, high pace game. Oh, um, I actually got what twenty points out of another player, so that was that was impressive. Like very, very. <laughs> and the uh, head coach uh, Lisa Bluter, Bluter. Yeah, she 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 I mean, been there since two thousand. She called a great game, bro. She had a great mm -hmm. strategy going into that game. So, like, I'm going to run these girls to death. We can't. We cannot beat them at half court. They're too, too big, too physical, too strong, too skilled. But what we can beat them at is we can run. We can run the floor, run the floor, um, end up getting Angel in foul trouble, which was, uh, you know, a lot of these, some questionable calls in there. I will say the officiating in the game was kind of, yeah, but the officiating in the, in both tournaments, men and women, it's kind of been iffy if you mm -hmm. you know if you really watched it. But um, yeah, man, great game. That's, that's that's pretty much all I got for it. For real, for real. Other than the best, if you want to get into that, <laughs> oh, we're getting we gonna get to that. Not about yeah, man, no. go ahead. I feel like man, it was it was a really good game, bro. Total upset on LSU's part for not shutting down. Uh, you know, the pieces on Iowa's team that they needed to shut down, which the main piece is, of course, Caitlin Clark. Caitlin put up 41 on them girls, man, nine three-pointers, man. She was just jacking it from, from all over the all over the court, bro. It was like NBA Jam, man. Like, she's on fire, man. <laughs> like, literally, bro. Like, she was balling out of control on them girls, man. I feel like Felt like if uh, Jay would have been guarding her most of the game, it would have been a better a better uh, output at the end of the game. I feel like she should have been on her from beginning to end because Haley Van Lith they have nothing for that girl, and they should have made that adjustment sooner than later. Now, if uh, Jay was cooking, she put up 23 points last night. Uh, she was hooping. She was balling. Uh, That's a very solid 23. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, was, I ain't gonna even lie to you. That was a solid twenty-three, but she put it up. Uh, yeah, Kate Kate Martin on Iowa's team. Um, I think that's the girl who put up twenty-one. Yeah, mm -hmm. she that, that second was, best player. Yeah, that was that was much needed for them to actually win that game for uh for old girl to have some backup, bro. Because if she didn't have another twenty-point shooter, bro, they wouldn't have won against LSU last night. Uh. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, very good game. It was the number one. Uh, it was actually they broke the record for uh, most watched uh, women's basketball game with like oh, twelve wow. million viewers last night. Like over twelve million viewers last night watched that game. So, um, very exciting game to watch, man. I actually enjoyed checking it out the whole time last night, bro. I was just glued to the screen. Uh, Angel Reese, man, she she was getting shut down out there, man, offensively a lot. Uh, them girls was on her neck. I saw <laughs> it, man. She, you know, it is what it is. But you know, at least she she hit her she should she hit her uh season average. She hit by seventeen points. So I mean, it wasn't that far off from what she you know 
you know, she's been doing, but I mean, it's not the same Angel Reese we saw last year. You know, she she's not as dominant as she was playing last year, in my opinion, this year, but it is what it is, you know. But yeah, that's all I gotta say on that topic, bro. Great. Yeah, man. And that and the thing is, bro, I like I said, bro, I consider this an upset for the most part, man, because the thing about uh LSU look what I'm looking at right now, they only played um seven people the whole night. So they literally played like all their stars. Like every girl on their roster can literally start at Iowa. That shows you how good those girls is. You had um uh, uh Michaela Williams that was like she was like number two, number three player coming out of uh, high school behind Juju. She been playing uh, great all year. Van Lifts. Uh, I felt like she just played, like she just downgraded her game ever since she got to uh, LSU. She ain't been like True. what they expect, expect that her. Fly J played good. That's why I said, I know she scored 23, but bro, you know how sometimes somebody just scored these many points and you be like, I watched the game. I don't remember her scoring that much. That's just how crazy it was. And uh, Anisha Morrow, who uh, came from uh, DePaul, she was averaging like 25 and 16 coming to LSU. So that's why I'm like, bro, look at the production that LSU had compared to what Iowa had. Like, this shouldn't even been close. Like, this shouldn't even been a game. And that's why I was like, it's cool when you have all that help. That's why I, that's why Caitlin uh gets a lot of um love because like bro, look what she's doing with less, with far less compared in the women's game, bro. You have a squad like that, man. You lucky to get out the um round of 32. If that you may win the first round, you'll be lucky to make a sweet 16. They going back to the final four, back to back years, dog. With this girl, what she doing is very, very special. And the one thing, man, we might well go ahead and get to that part. Uh, after the game, the one thing I hated is from like other people, man, like. We shouldn't have to make race into everything when it comes to sports, man. Sometimes just watch a game. I'm like, that's all it is. You know who can ball. I don't care if you're Puerto Rican, you're white, you're black, green, yellow, frog, rabbit, or whatever. If you can hoop, you can hoop. And the problem that I have with a lot of people, dog, that, um, like, when some folks just like Caitlin Clark, and they be like, hey, man, this girl can ball. It's like somebody always trying to discredit her in every way. <laughs> like, well, she got to win this. Like, bro, she literally won every major award besides the championship. And the only reason why she ain't winning no championship, well, she may win it this year, but I'm just saying up to this point why she haven't won a championship is because she plays for Iowa. <laughs> nobody. And I mean nobody. And I watch probably more women's basketball than – a lot of folks, I'll say 99.9%, and I can't even name one. But uh, Martin, that's about the only one. Hell, I didn't even know they had a coach name. And it was crazy, man. And she been there for, um, what is it, since 2000? And it's 2024, and, like, they got this far. Like, man, you just got to give credit to who can ball, man. I just, like, we need to stop that, man. Just, like, stop trying to, because I guarantee you, if she was black, the gold standard, how they look at Serena Williams, anybody black that can ball in anything, that's how they'll be looking at her right now. Oh, like this is our uh, golden child or whatnot. But she's white. And that's why I don't like. And we're going to uh, get on the other stuff in a minute about that game. But uh, what's y'all thoughts on like just all the. Uh, BS that she has to deal with. I mean, I mean, look, if you look at the game last night, 
it was two white girls that were determined factors of who, how they won and lost, like, or who was going to win and who was going to lose. And the main reason why LSU lost that game was not because of the white girl, Caitlin Clark, but because of the white girl, Haley Van Lee. <laughs> she went two for 10, bro. She she's went not, two for she's 10. not the reason, bro. She's not the reason. She's the reason, and she let Caitlin just – do what she wanted all game, bro. She's she's she struggling. Her brace, she sweated out. My fault. I wanted to ask you this when when you was uh when you was uh oh we making an appearance. We making an appearance. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Oh, come on in. Well, well, I'm 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 gonna go to uh ten. Yeah, go to ten. Yeah. Put it on mute. I got him. But yeah, um, I thought we we're gonna uh, Tudor gonna make an appearance on the show. But uh, I wanted to ask him. Hold on, there you go. He back. Now, this is what I wanted to ask you when you was talking. You said they, yeah, everybody saying they put Flaje on her. How many, how many points you thought she was gonna score if Flaje was on her the whole game? What, what, what you think? How many points? She would definitely put up at least a 30 ball. Yeah, man. But listen. So, that, so not too much of a difference. The, the only difference is. Less than Flage. a 10-point game, though, man. Like, it's, it's probably wouldn't have gotten them 23. The and there you go. And huh? She'd have been tired. Flaze probably wouldn't have gotten them 23. She wouldn't have had the energy to, to get that 23. You got to pick Caitlin up full court. That takes a lot of energy, man. This man eating cookies and milk, man. <laughs> you know, want some milk and cookies? Want some milk and cookies? I do got some milk and cookies, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. And that and that's the thing, like, bro. I understand, like, I can understand why folks questioning the game plan. I can understand that because you got to make that switch at some point, like, bro. Somebody, you got to do something. I believe. Like, bro, if you cooking somebody, I'm I'm trying to put somebody new on you. I need some fresh legs on you that can guard. Who is my best, next best defender? Who gonna uh we gotta force the ball out of hand on what out of her hand somewhere? We gotta double team, we gotta do something what? different. But it don't seem like they adjusted well on that at all. So I can leave to understand that criticism. I, I tell you like this though. Even when they did force the ball out of hand, those girls from Iowa were knocking down shots, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, 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 they didn't. A lot of them didn't score a lot of points, but they hit some big shots and some timely moments um, when she would, she would, when the ball got kicked out to them. Um, and even the uh, the bigs, man, the way they was able to run the floor and steal those easy layups, bro. Yep. Like all of that is because your attention is on this girl that can shoot from 30. So you don't want to get back too far up under the basket in transition. Um, and those players just leak through, get some easy baskets. So uh, that's what, that's why I said, shout out to the game plan from Iowa, man, because mm-hmm. they knew the plan was to force the ball out of Caitlin's hand. And nine times out of 10, they didn't want to get Flaje in foul trouble because they knew that she was going to need to score the ball. Mm-hmm. Haley Van Lith hadn't been scoring the ball like that. But but that's the thing, dog. They have other people that can score. Like these that's, true. <laughs> that's the thing that as much as much as I believe that Flage uh could um uh, they needed her to score, they had other people that can get their own basket. And I don't think they use that enough. I so think they were really bank, was, they were banking ahead. on uh if you watch that Louisville, I think it's Louisville Iowa game last year. And saw Van Lee and uh Caitlin go at it. I think they was thinking that you know she it would ignite something in her to go out there and want to compete at that level again, but she couldn't she couldn't she couldn't draw it up. <laughs> man, I I I what's that uh Larry Bird quote, man? That that was a great quote. <laughs> I don't know who posted that, but they they posted at the right time about Larry Bird a year ago and said, I just he said, I just didn't want a white guy guarding me because of disrespect <laughs> to my game. Yeah, yeah man, put a black guy on me, man. You put yeah. a white guy on me, I feel like that's disrespectful. 
And that's what they should. They should have been made that switch, bro. Cause that girl was cooking that girl like some stir fry, man. It didn't matter who was gonna be on her. That that that's my only thing. I don't care who was on her. You're not yeah. going to stop her. You can only she wouldn't have forty piece her. though. She wouldn't have forty piece. If she scored thirty five, you think that's she okay, dude? She almost beat him last year. She she had more points than anybody on the floor. She had like thirty that, something last year. They should have been on that girl like like. And they had better. And I forgot her name just that quick. Shawty had like one of a historic first half and shooting threes. That's the reason why they had these big old lead or whatnot. And they were probably deeper then. No. They had, bro. They had a deeper squad, maybe. But. Like, bro, that girl could not beat them by herself, man. And that's why I was like, LSU is just like laying an egg right now. Because I don't know how y'all just not stopping her. Yeah. But, hey, it is what it is. But so, yeah. the fight, what'd you say? I just looked it up, right, just out of curiosity. Go ahead. Uh, Louisville played Iowa last year. Uh, in that game, Iowa won 97 to 83. Haley Van Leith in that game had 27 points, three assists, two rebounds. Can you guess how many points Caitlin Clark had? 51. I'm just going 51. She had 41, 12, and 10. Like, you can't make this up. Like it's literally almost the same stat line. <laughs> from Triple the last double. time you saw her. So I think she had what 41, 12, and like what six or something this game this year against LSU? She had uh 41, 12, and 7. Yeah. 41, 12, and 7. So last year when this same girl guarded her, she had 41, 12, and 10. And she had a triple double. <laughs> and I seen a stat, bro, that was so crazy, dog. Like in the history since they've been keeping stats, I don't know if it I think it was assists or rebounds. I can't remember which one, but it, in the history up to that point until they made it an official stat, Kaylin Clark is the only person to have 40 points and 10 assists in a game, and she done it twice. And I didn't know it was in that game. So that's crazy that you reeled it off like that. She is literally the only person, and she done it twice. Men and women. That is insane. Both of them on the same girl. On the same girl. I feel I feel bad for her, man. Oh she wow. gotta be feeling horrible right now. I would. No, the coach <laughs> needs to be feeling horrible because she should have known what was gonna happen, bro. She right. should have known this, bro. She should have known she should have looked that game up. <laughs> bro, I give Kim Moki a lot of credit, bro, because yeah, it wasn't her best. Game plan, but bro, she's one of the top coaches in the game. She just had a bad game plan for that girl. Yeah, she you don't win these many uh national titles. I think she has three of them. You don't that just don't happen. You just don't win three national championships for no reason. She knows what she's doing, but sometimes you can just out coach yourself like you're trying to do too much. Man, she did too much in this game. So she believed in Haley too much. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you kind of seen it coming though. I know at halftime it was tied like 45, 45. I think Caitlin might have like 25 points at half. Yeah. But you could see like she was she 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 turned the ball over a couple times where she was just trying to get her teammates involved. Like it was now I don't want to piss nobody off when I say this, but it was very reminiscent of the games you would see from Kobe where he would come out in the first half and try to get his teammates involved. And then you just knew at halftime when he came out in the second half, it was going to be bombs away. That's that's how that game looked to me when at halftime when I saw it. I was like, oh, is she just trying to get points from anywhere she can <laughs> Bro, right now? Gonna- she was killing them. She was killing it uh, last night, man. She, she bro, the man. one play that got me, bro, was when she was. Uh, they were passing the ball on the out of bounds. I think they screened her open, and uh, Angel somehow got on her at the three point line, and she just shot a fadeaway three or all balance three right in her face. I was like, bro, this girl be moving, bro. She remind like. 
movement wise, like I don't I don't think I've seen nobody like stop moving like that since Rip Hamilton. Like how Rip Hamilton used to just run all game long. I was like, bro, you're gonna have to be in shape with this man if you're gonna uh, play basketball. Shout out to Rip though, one of my favorite players ever. The Rip, Rip will light it up, man. Yeah. Anyway, but, on the court. But after the game is what I absolutely hated. Uh, I, I'm really, really surprised that uh, Caitlin didn't do the uh, hit him with the Tony, hit him with the uh, Tony Yayo, yeah, because I know how petty I am. But if like somebody get the best of me at something, I'd be like, all right, keep that same energy, because I know when it's my time, you ain't gonna like me. But she handled it with class. She like she took the high road. She like job not done. Which, in other words, it was the right thing to do because, yeah, the job ain't done. We still got um, win two more to win a natty. But, two tough ones, too. Yeah. <laughs> more than likely, it's going to be two tough ones to uh, take it home. But the thing I didn't like was uh, Angel Reese's uh, press conference. Now, the thing that I – don't get me wrong. The um, some of the stuff like with the death threats, bro. No man, if you're a man or a woman, whoever doing that over some sports, you need to uh, get a life. Nobody condones that. You're a lame. You're a sucker. I don't care who it is. You nobody condones that. The problem that I had with it, I just felt like it was bad timing. Because you can't play Big Bad Wolf. Like, you you that, you. I'm the villain. And then when you lose, now we just like, oh, look at me. I'm sad and all that. It don't work that way. You can't have it both ways. Like, you may have been going through all that. And I feel sorry if you, if you are going through that. But. The timing was just so off of me or whatnot. I, I just did not like it. And you just can't play. You can't play both sides of the fence, man. You just can't. You can't do that. If you going to play that role, you got to play that role. We get on We get on players, man players about that all the time. Draymond plays that role no matter what. And you got to stand ten toes, ten toes down. Like you, you do a lot of stuff, man. You can't. I'm sorry, bro. You just can't do all this stuff, and you just expect somebody to feel sorry for you. Now, some people felt sorry for you, but it's a lot of guys in the media just like, nah, not falling for it. Like now, nah. like yeah, the death threat part. Like no, nah, yeah, we 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 don't condone that. Like nobody condones that. I hope nobody condones that because that's some sucker stuff. But what's y'all thoughts on it, man? And especially y'all thoughts on it and other people making excuses for it. Uh, man, you go ahead. I feel like, uh, you know, she wanted the mini violin to come out, but you know what I'm saying? Like, she she wanted some some sympathy, man. You know, like you said, bro, you can't play both sides. Like just last year, you was all in their face, popping your stuff. You know what I'm saying? You didn't have to make it like such a a, a, a drama filled event. It could have just been like, yo, you know, they played that. They, they you know, give them girls they props. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, give them they props. You know, they came back and beat y'all after y'all beat them last year, got a ring and everything. You know what I'm saying? Just just get them girls they props, man, and, and and move on. You know what I'm saying? But, man, that that was like <clears throat> them girls were sad and hurt and all this stuff like that. It was just crazy. It was just crazy. Like, you know, uh, I, I I feel like that from some, from some champions, you know what I'm saying? It should never go. It should never be that serious, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, well, hey, I don't know. 
maybe they was banking on going back to back. You know what I'm saying? But it it should never get to that point where y'all just like, this is my sister and y'all don't know her like I know her. And then she's like, you know, I've been sexualized and all this stuff. It turned into like, golly, bro. It, it turned into just more than it had to last night, dog. That's and, that's what, and, and, that, and that's how I felt. Like, you could have said that for social media, bro. Oh, matter of fact, if, if that was the case, why not say this like a long time ago? I, I just felt like that time, like you were trying to look, get sympathy for the game. I could be wrong, but that's what it looks like. That's the only thing I'm saying. My fault, T. It's Lotto fault. <laughs> it's just Lotto fault. What Lotto got to do with that? <laughs> she was in that video, man. She was in that video with Cardi B. Yeah, that's not a son. I went to LSU. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. She got sexualized. Well, it, hey, that's part of it. They put in a booty shirt and all that, man. She felt, she felt violated. Got all in the video twerking and shit. <laughs> she should have been practicing. Obviously. <laughs> Golly, like so, every stat, every she went down in almost every stat this year. She was averaging twenty three points a game left. Well, to, her defense, to her defense, to her to her defense, they do have a lot more people on there than like one on one score. So, yeah, I give up. Uh, but tell so, you what, you, what you think about it? So, I mean, before before I, uh, I, I would just want to say this first. I want to give, I want to give Angel Reese her kudos. She is probably the most marketable college athlete that I've ever seen, and a lot of the reason now, now Caitlin Clark is amazing. Don't get me wrong, but a lot of the reason that the casual fan is now paying attention to women's college basketball is because of Angel Reese. Mm -hmm. I mean, Caitlin Clark appeals to basketball fans. Angel Angel Reese's audience extends beyond basketball, so uh, you get a lot of those people looking at these games um, now that she's in it. So, with, I want to give her, you know, credit for that. With that being said, I didn't like it, bro. I, I I didn't like it. Uh, for a, a number of reasons. For one, you come out, Caitlin Clark's warming up, you sit your crown on the bench and walk off. Um, a lot of hey, people talk on, about it. My fault before you go off. They said that she did she been doing that all year. But okay. I'm, if she's been doing I'm, that, if she's been doing that all year, then she's been being distasteful all year. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that just that just makes it worse. Mm. So she's been doing that all year. Okay, great. Um, we don't even have to go back that far. Just, mm -hmm. just, just the last game. No, just last game she was playing UCLA. You know, you got the clip of her yapping at the coach or whatever. Right? This has become every game issue for her. Um, she just doesn't. She's not a humble person when it comes to basketball. And I think a lot of that is because she's celebrated in a way that basketball players aren't celebrated. She's almost like a reality TV show playing, TV show star playing basketball, which is crazy because Flage is actually a reality TV show star. But, but she's, Angel Reese is almost like that. And it's like, one thing you know if you know sports, like the pendulum will swing. It will like it's not a matter of if it's when you're not gonna win every game. At some point, you're gonna run into a team on a on a day, and you're going to lose. And uh, she just seemed like she was not prepared for that, man. And I think the reason why you saw a lot of the tears is because of. All of the shit that she talked, 
if she had not done that, it wouldn't have been no reason for no tears. You wouldn't have felt embarrassed. She got in the press conference and made it the Andrew Reese show. She wasn't talking about my team. We 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 underperformed. I love these girls. None of that. It was I, 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 I. She said she was oh being sexualized. She put her own pictures out there on Instagram and social media and stuff. She sexualized herself. And she probably got paid because she probably signed brand deals for them. So I have no sympathy for you on that. If you get in death threats, that's corny. Like, nobody wants to see that. But all this other stuff, man, and this crying after you lost, it's like, what do you think? You wouldn't go lose a game? But I think it's just the fact that you lost that game to that girl mm-hmm. in that moment. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It, and I said it off, off the pod, but the thing about Caitlin Clark is like a lot of people, she's she's drug into this because of Angel Reese. A lot of people wouldn't know her outside of people who love basketball if it wasn't for her back and forth with Angel Reese last year. I mean, basketball fans would love her because she's an amazing basketball player, but the casual fans that are just coming along for the reality show, they would have no idea who this girl is. If it wasn't for her back and forth with Angel Reese. Right. So I challenge anybody, man. I challenge anybody this. If you have an issue with this, uh, I challenge you to this. Defend Angel Reese without mentioning Caitlin Clark. If you can do that, <laughs> then you have a valid point. If you cannot do that, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> if, if your only defense is going to be, well, the media, covering this this girl differently from another like no no i don't care what the other player is doing like you you got to be in control of your own actions and some of the stuff that she's been doing since she's gotten this fame you gotta think about it she's taking a pay cut going to the wba she said that publicly like since she's gotten this fame man because you didn't hear this at uh at maryland I mean, it was some trash talk. She had some videos out there. Uh, she had one viral video where she told the girl she not cut like that. But that's actually on the basketball court. I don't mind trash talk on the basketball court. When they do talk about Caitlin Clark, all of the stuff that they say about her is stuff that she does while the game is going on. Right? The stuff that you got get from Angel Reese following players around after the game and stuff like that is, like, extracurricular. And... It, clearly she didn't she she's not from a place like where i'm from because if you follow somebody around on the court after the game like that waving your hand in their face it might not end well depending on who they playing <laughs> so like that's not a good look man uh and i i mean i don't have no sympathy for the tears it's sports man like hey you 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 want to further the women's game and you want to be on par with the men's game this is what men do they get in those press conferences they swallow their pride and they move on and play another game. That's it. That's it. And this happens to NBA players all the time. You think about LeBron James. The reason why he gets scrutinized so much right now is because of the Miami not one, not two, not three, not four. And then they was talking about Dirk uh, in the finals and stuff, and they were acting all arrogant. He humbled them. And, and what happens? This dude come back win two champ- two championships with Miami. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, he, he didn't get in the press conference and cry about it and say he was, you know, well, I, I don't know, man. It's just, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. I don't think for, uh, I don't think for the women's game where they're trying to go, they don't want to, you don't want to turn it into reality TV. Yeah, they ain't got to get but, that emotional. Yeah. And you and you got to reward the ballers, man. Like, I mean, you just got beat by a, a better player, fair mm-hmm. and square. Mm-hmm. And that's why I didn't want to. Uh, I don't want to see the game go there, bro. It's been too many great all-time players in the women's game. Like, it, it's supposed to be elevating every year. Like, you got to be a stepping stone. If you're one of those people, like, man, you got to take the good with the bad. You just can't have it have it one way all the time and like, oh, I'm going to play victim that way. That's, that's avoiding accountability or whatnot. So, 
but she's going to learn from it. And I hope she learned from it sooner than later. Don't let social media uh, get you uh, too high and don't let it get you too low. You are, you are a star. Whether, whether folks like you or not, it don't matter. You are a star. But you got to take what the old saying is, as much as given, much is required. Right. And it, it, hey, you want to be that person? You got to be that person when you win it. You got to be that person when you lose. Plain and simple. So, but, so what do you think? What do you think the uh, the the vibe would have been like in the press conference had they won? Oh, and that I'm I'm glad you said that before it's we uh, move on. Man, they would have been flexed. Yeah. Oh yeah, y'all seen what we did to them? Yep, yeah, ain't nothing. All that, like, bro, now ain't nobody. And then the same people that's doing all the crying out have been like, yeah, yeah, look what they did to them. They, they, right. it would have been all over social that, media. That whole, like, that whole crown picture would have been like a major flex. Had they won that game, that whole, the whole caption on that picture would have been different. Mm-hmm. Like, man, folks, folks don't. Hey man, but this is why you gotta play the games, bro. (laughs) Yep. Hey man, and folks, hey, I'm I'm just gonna leave it alone. Hey man, y'all come back if you're not going, but you need to uh, need to figure that out, man. But he had another good game last night. Good old UConn versus USC. Page versus Juju, man, great game uh, all the way through. But UConn kind of uh, ran away with it at the end. Uh, more experienced team, championship head coach. Let me. Look, I'm disrespecting Gino, the <laughs> goat, the goat. I don't think if if, if anybody ever try to argue who's the goat of uh, women's college basketball. Is that man? It it is is no other man. It should be one thousand percent is him all the time. He is the he is the standard. <laughs> when they say the standard, he is the standard. And then is uh rest in peace. Oh, uh, hey, how I put that about? Get about my girl just that quick down in Tennessee. Come on, come on, man. Y'all help me out. Oh man. Um. Tennessee, Pat yeah. Summit. Yeah, Summit. Summit. My bad. I said Summers. Man, we tripping, man. Yeah. The, the late great GOAT, man. One of the best coaches ever. Not even in the women's game. One of the best coaches ever. She's second behind him. And that's not even saying nothing bad because she's a GOAT in her own right. But I I, I don't – I think this is one of uh, Geno's best coaching jobs. Ever, because it, it's not the UConn team that we like accustomed to seeing, like the the stars, man. Because you really just feel like you got the big time stars with uh Connecticut. You got the Sue Birds, Win Cass, Diana Tarasis, the um Maya Moores, the uh, Renee Montgomerys, the Tina Charleses. I'm like, bro, Brianna Stewart. Hey, bro, just bit time name after bit time name. Yes, you got Paige, but it's just it just feel like it's just her, and that's it. And it just feel like uh, Gino is just doing an outstanding job. Like he just proving like why he's a goat coach. But Juju came out there with twenty eight, ten boards, couple of assists, and Paige came out there balling. Doing the same thing. I think she had 27. But what's y'all take on the game? And uh I feel like it was a very exciting game to watch. Um the was going back and forth for a minute. But uh I wanna say uh you know I think uh Juju Juju put up 29 points. I think her teammate, she had a teammate who put up like around 25, 26 or something, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah, and uh, they were out there balling, bro. But it's too many gaps in that in that team, man. When when it came to scoring, and uh, Connecticut had just more consistent scores on their squad, bro. Because I saw them two girls, the other other chicks didn't even like score ten points. You know what I'm saying on that team. So, uh, very exciting game, man. It would have been cool to see Juju versus Caitlin. Uh, too bad we're not gonna be able to see that, but you know it's in CAA, man. This is how it goes down, and uh, you know, hopefully in the future, you know, we'll definitely see them in the future playing against each other one day in the professional league. But um, yeah, man, that that was a very good game last night. Uh, it's crazy because Gino was saying that after the game that he feels like Juju should go to the uh, league. I don't know if you guys caught that. Mm. I don't know. No. I don't know about that yet. Huh? No, she's so definitely. I didn't, I didn't hear that. Yeah, yeah, he definitely said that in the press conference afterwards. He was like saying Juju should go to the WNBA. She's WNBA ready. Oh yeah, he definitely uh, said that. He yeah, said she scored she more points than anybody on both teams. So you know what I'm saying? Like she put up 29 last night. Uh, broke a uh, freshman scoring record. Um, hey, man. You know, she's definitely, in my opinion, ready for the league. I mean, but it is what it is. You know, these these kids are making more money in college, like we were saying earlier. Well, for the females, at least. Oh, especially for the women. Definitely for the women. They're making more money for the women. in sure. college than they are uh, as professional athletes in today's, mm -hmm. uh, in just today's world right now. So, yep. you know, hopefully that changes for them in the near future because we got way better basketball uh, coming soon for the WNBA with these uh, superstar athletes that are showcasing uh, exciting basketball for the past couple of years now. You know, maybe that'll... Uh, that'll put more eyes on the WNBA for the years to come. So we'll see what's up. What's your take, T, on the game? So so that game was, I mean, entertaining, just just like the game before it. Uh, I mean, it's a great game. Like, it, it was close pretty much through halftime. Uh -oh. The second half, you kind of saw UConn start to uh, pull away uh, little by little, though. It wasn't like they was just just blowing this team out the water. Uh, Juju did her thing, man. Like, uh, she was as advertised, you know. She had the 29 points. Um, shout out to Paige. Paige, I think Paige played 40 minutes. Actually, I think there's a couple players on UConn team played 40 minutes, went whistle to whistle. So, like, uh, that's impressive. Uh, I want to say it was Paige and uh, the center, it was, and she played 40 minutes too. She had like 20 some points. Um, it's interesting about this game was U UConn actually shot horribly from the free throw line. This, this probably could have been a blowout. If you look at the numbers, and we like USC is a great free throw shooting team, mainly because the person that's going to the line most of the time is Juju. She's drawing the contact, uh, but UConn shot very poorly from. I, I want to say they was 50, 60 percent from the free throw line, and they got there a lot, and uh, so it, it could have been, it could have gotten ugly, but uh, I mean. This game, just like the first one, was as advertised. You got to see the stars. The stars came out and performed for both teams. Uh, Juju performed. Uh, Paige came out. She had, I think she had like 10 boards, 20-something um, points, 28 points, something like that. Like, she, uh, I don't know what her plans is for next year. I know she's she's coming off the injury, so I, I, I would think she she stick around. You're on mute. My fault, my fault. <laughs> yeah, she coming back. She coming she back. back. Okay, yeah. so that's gonna be exciting to watch. She yeah. announced on uh senior day. Uh, oh. she's coming back. Okay, and, it's, and she probably need to coming out the injury like that. Mm -hmm. uh, 
she was gonna be the second overall pick or her uh, and uh uh Becker. It was gonna be her, but yeah. more than likely when she come out, she's gonna be the number one pick next year. Yeah, probably so. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, man, this game was like I said, as advertised. I said like back said. like that ain't page man. My fault. <laughs> I G- got the the G- girl from from uh Stanford. I forgot a name oh. just that quick. I'm about to look up, but go ahead. My fault. Yeah, Gino, like you said, uh, great coach. Uh, that show, show you this, this game came down to. I feel like when you have a game that's close like that, it comes down to like coaching championship DNA. What your players, uh, do they know how to win games? Right? Because everybody can compete. Not well, I ain't gonna say that everybody can't compete, but there's a huge difference in being able to compete in, compete in games and actually win games. Mm-hmm. Um, we see it in all sports from football, basketball. Like there's a lot of teams come out that, that can give you a close game, but when it comes to winning moments and winning time, they, they just can't, they don't have it yet. Uh, and that's one of the things about Juju, why I can't really put her in the class with Caitlin just yet. Um, just because she's so young and, uh, She's got plenty of time, man, and I, and I think that what she's doing now, if she continues this at this pace and she gets better and better, you look at two, three years from now, well, two years from now, if she stays around that long, two years from now, she's going to be probably the best player in college basketball at that point. Like, I think she's going to be there next year. Probably next year. Probably she's next year. Yeah, I mean, She's the number two score in the in women's NCAA, right behind yeah, her, Caitlin. Her her game just translates, you know what I mean? It, it, that's why a lot of people say that she could she could. A lot of people think that she could play the men's game. I don't really agree with that. No, nah, no, nah, I don't agree with that. Nah, but nah, but nah, nah. the level of physicality that she plays with, because you know, she just be pushing them girls around. She drives to the basket like yeah. that. That's we we. I'm gonna say we haven't seen that in W when in uh, the women's game before because we have, but like currently there's no player that's actually doing that for real, for real. And shooting it with the skill, that pull up mid range jumper that she got, like it's uh, she's 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 on her way. But I just think you know it's time to pump the brakes on her for this year because yeah, she's she's no Caitlin Clark right now. Oh. Uh, in, in, Caitlin, in Caitlin averaged 31 a game. I think she averaged 29. I mean, she's close. And, she and, and close. I get it. I get it, though, because, you know, you could argue that Caitlin's the better shooter. I get that. But I always ask, what's the object of the game? <laughs> the, the object of the game is to put the ball in the basket. So if a person is a better shooter at the level of Caitlin Clark, she's probably the better player at that point hey if, if you had to if you had to draft a player right <laughs> you know I, I, <laughs> I, i'm gonna stop i'm gonna, I'm gonna stop right there. i'm gonna stop myself i'm gonna i just want to start about, about the cause of controversy <laughs> yeah, i was gonna start the pot too hard too hard <laughs> Yo, what you gonna say? What you, <laughs> you gonna say? What you gonna say, man? Hey, hey, who, who you, let's say you had between Juju and Ronnie. Who who you take? <laughs> who you take? Ronnie. Come on. I'm Ronnie. Don't don't fool yourself now. Hey, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> she in and out. Yeah, I know, man. She she it's, gonna be famous today. She gonna be famous today. Funny <laughs> too. But but, yeah. Uh, is it no. a co-ed league? <laughs> <laughs> right. What's the rules? I gotta know the rules. She's out there, <laughs> <laughs> Don't fool yourself, bro. Don't fool hey, yourself. Hey, <laughs> Juju put up twenty nine points. Brody finished with four point eight, man. man boy, yeah. please, that's in the women's game. Brody played in the uh, <laughs> yeah. If Brody played in that uh, women's, I mean, played in the uh, 
the women's college basketball, the man would be averaging a triple double and be booming. <laughs> Fifty point triple double. Fifty point triple double. <laughs> like let's let's not let's not fool ourselves now. Now they may consider that disrespectful, but I consider it disrespectful. This man even suggested that. Cause you gotta think I'll about it. How tall? How tall is? How tall is Juju? She like six, She's like two. six two. Bernie's six about what? Six, six four. four. Bernie James on the on the WNBA floor is gonna look like a giant. <laughs> <laughs> His speed, and you're just gonna see this man flying in there. This man, this man, be the greatest WNBA player ever. <laughs> I'm not bro. saying. It. And hold on, hold on, let me go ahead and get this out just in case somebody want to feel some type of way. We're not saying Bronny is a woman, man. We just no. saying this hypothetical, man. For well, all you sensitive folks, we just saying <laughs> hypothetical. Like my God. What you what you think about Paige, man? I'm a Paige fan. I was a Paige fan as a freshman. I was hurt, sad to see her get hurt. Uh, she's kind of got it, overshadowed during the injury because we got some other stars that have come along. You think that she can bounce back, man? And, and, well, I ain't gonna say bounce back, but you, you what do you think you see her next year? It's like she on that list of, of players. If Juju's number one, you think Paige is the second? Yeah. I don't see why not. Or no, uh oh Wale mm. from South Carolina. South Carolina, yeah. She a dog, man. Yeah, she is a dog. So, and she can possibly uh win the uh, national championship in her freshman year. That's now, speaking true. of the women's final four, great little segue. My pick day one, <laughs> and my pick last year was the same. I said South Carolina. But Kaylin Clark uh, came to the party and ruined it for them or whatnot. Because I knew if South Carolina seen uh, if South Carolina seen LSU again, it wasn't gonna be pretty for uh, LSU because why? Adrian Reese could not. The one person that she struggled against last year was Aaliyah Boston, who was the number one overall pick. <laughs> And guess where Caitlin Clark is going? Where Leah Boston is? The Indiana Fever are going to sell some tickets. Yeah. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. Well, they about to sell some tickets, boy. They're going to be well funded in Indiana. But South Carolina going just going to make uh, these final four pits quick. But, uh, well, not the pits, like who winning. But I got South Carolina winning over um, – South Carolina winning over uh, NC State. I got Iowa winning over UConn in a close one. And for the national championship, I got South Carolina. But it can possibly come down if Kalen Clark can at least get some type of help, just some type of help. Now, I feel like like the next, the best coach in college basketball Right behind Gino in today's game is Dunn Staley, without a doubt. Dunn is going to be more prepared for her this time. So I don't think it's going to be like how it was last time, but it's so. But I still have South Carolina winning by at least 10 and they become national champion. What's y'all pick? Yeah, pretty much the same thing, man. I got. Mm-hmm. I got uh South Carolina beating NC State. Uh and then uh man, this it's a this 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 Iowa Yukon game is is a uh, tough one to pick. Uh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Iowa. I'm gonna go with Iowa. Um it's just simply because when I watch UConn and USC, uh, I don't. UConn really didn't have an answer for Juju. And if you do that against Caitlin Clark, it's going to be a forty pack. 
And I don't know mm-hmm. if you can if, if you can win that game with her scoring 40 points. She, I think she's going to score 40 the rest of the tournament. But um, so yeah, I got Iowa meeting South Carolina in the championship, and then uh like you, I picked South Carolina. I love Dunn Staley. I must keep that pick. But my God, like uh Caitlin Clark. It, 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 I keep struggling to say Iowa, and I always say Caitlin Clark because she's literally the only person on the team. <laughs> South Carolina versus Caitlin Clark, and um, yeah, I, I, I'm still gonna ride with South Carolina. But man, like she's she's the X factor. She can put up put up big numbers and and just totally flip the script. Yeah, because Cardoza on South Carolina, they center and Olawale. Yeah. Bro, ballers, and then and then you just saw it with them get out rebounded. Like they got beat up on the glass against LSU and still won this game. Uh-huh. So I can't look at Cardoza as even though I think she's a better big than anybody on LSU team. I think um, just because she's bigger, one. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, you can't look at that as just this huge advantage. Um, Cause they they've shown that they can win despite getting beat on the glass. So, yep. But I don't think they want to uh, play uh, them games with <laughs> South no. Carolina. I don't <laughs> think I, like you're gonna have to have a great shooting game. You're gonna yeah, and not turn the ball over. Which South Carolina is a great defensive team. So, yeah, they that's really like the game. That's that's why the game uh, need to be played. That's the only way we're going to know. We just talk uh, hypotheticals. True. <clears throat> what's, your, what's your pitch to Haven before we move on to the men? Of course, I got South Carolina winning uh, their game. Um, I'm picking Iowa to, uh, to advance. And um, in the national championship, um, I said national championship. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it is national. Yeah, national championship. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, man. I think I think uh, this Caitlin year, man. I think this Caitlin Clark year. It'll be it'll be one a. It'll be one hell of a story. It'll be a crazy story. You know what I'm saying? Took yeah. down LSU, came through, got your ring. You go through you go through LSU, then you go through UConn, and you go through South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a tough road to Let a me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The debate, it wouldn't be no debate. I, I'm not saying she the GOAT because I don't believe she she's the GOAT. It's like Maya Moore, you got Diana Taurasi, you got um, you got Cheryl Miller. But she's in that conversation. <laughs> she oh, in that con- yeah, It ain't bro. even no to run through those teams, to have to go through those teams to win a championship, like it would be, it would be impressive. Just not even no doubt. The least, yeah. It's a Carmelo type, Kimball yeah. Walker type, Shabazz Napier type run to a championship. Like the only difference is those players was at traditional power. She's at Iowa, <laughs> so it would be even more and even, no and even the crazy thing like Syracuse wasn't even uh like like yeah, yeah. Jim Bayheim like stayed consistently yeah. in the NCAA tournament but he never won one it's right, a right. mellow a special type player for him to get his first one and True. his only one so that's why that like mellow run was just special bro <laughs> like it was just special that's why they don't look at Anthony Davis Oh, uh, run the same because, like, bro, your team is loaded. <laughs> like, you do only thing you had to do is just stand under the rim, get blocks and rebounds. That's it. We got scores all over the floor, right? This man, I'm not saying, like, bro, ain't nobody. Gary McNamara was a, a good player, a excellent three point shooter. But I guarantee you, most folks outside of bas- in the basketball world don't even know who he is. But they know who Carmelo Anthony is. That's true. But we this all... one rival that though. So yeah. 
Oh no, 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 no. This 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 is you can now that's a debate. Now that will be a debate if that happens. So the best thing about that, uh the women play Friday, and then the last championship game for them is on Sunday. I'll, they switched it up, which I think is smart. Had a women play before the men. And then the men traditionally play on Saturday and they had a national championship game on Monday. So by next week, we, we got all the games out of the way. So we'll, we'll see. So we got two for South Carolina and one for Iowa. Now let's move on to the men. And y'all already know it's the reason why this hat is on. <laughs> Just want to throw that out there. It's the reason why this hat is on. Hold on. It's the reason why this hat is on, ladies and gentlemen. First time in the Final Four. I, I'm We're going to do the same thing with this one. Just give our pitch for it. Uh, I got Purdue beating uh, NC State. Even though NC State is having a legendary run. Uh, I mean, a legendary run. I, I was like, oh, man, they ain't going to get bad, dude. I think that role going to stop. Got past Duke. I like, ooh. But they got a tough one with Purdue. But I'm going to go out on the limb on this one, ladies and gentlemen. Only because I'm biased and I, I ain't afraid to say it. It's going to take a miracle. If we can play, um, if three things happen, I believe we can win this game. If we shoot well, limit our turnovers, and play great defense, we'll win this game easily. But I'm going with Alabama, and it's going to set up an Alabama-Purdue National Championship, a uh, national championship that we didn't see coming. And ladies and gentlemen, I, I think this is the year. Uh, I'm trying to remember, did we play Purdue this year or last year? But I think it was this year. Purdue got us. We get our rematch in the national championship game. And ladies and gentlemen, Rimmer Jammer, Yellow Hammer, give them hell, Alabama. We bring it back to the beautiful state of Alabama and we'll be national champions. Bias, yes. But if I'm not giving a bias pick, I'll say UConn will be the national champions. But you know who I'm rolling with. I'm rolling with the tide. Y'all can go ahead. Man, you really went out on the limb with that one, man. Hey, 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 somebody on here said they can win it all. That's the only thing I'm saying. You caught That's me on guard with that one. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. It, it, oh, no, my fault, Dave. Real quick. Oh, at least, at least I'm not saying it's not a biased pick. Then I'll be lying. <laughs> that is a very biased pick. And I am saying it very openly. It's a very biased pick. My fault, Dave. No, you good, man. Um, <clears throat> I mean, me, I got UConn beating Bama, man. Uh, UConn just has a really good team, bro. They're number one. Bama get made it this far. Uh, you know, nothing to take away from their basketball team or anything like that. I really feel like uh, if they do win, it's going to shock the world. You know what I'm saying? It's going to shock the college basketball world. If they beat UConn, but hey, I know. Can I say go. one more thing? And I'm sorry to interrupt <laughs> me. I'm sorry. If we beat them and we win that championship game, ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to miss the pod on Wednesday. That's all the thing I'm gonna say. I'm done. Yeah, it's it's gonna be it's it's really crazy, bro. Just because uh, you know, anything can happen, bro. Um, we've seen anything go down in these uh in these championships and stuff like that, in these championship runs. So, you know, you never know. You know what I'm saying? This is really – it's up in the air, bro, in the tournament. Um, I got Purdue beating NC State, of course. But, uh, you know, we just got to see, man. We got to see what happens, man, with this UConn-Bama game. I know everybody in Alabama is going to want a national championship over there. You know, they're going to be hyped. So – you know, we just got to see where where it goes, man. But but then again, man, I don't know, man. Let me take that back. That NC State team is pretty nasty, though, man. 
They're going to they gonna give Purdue a run for their money, dog, a little bit. But I think Purdue has an all-around better team, dog. But, but the way that they've been balling, dog, uh, NC State, they look pretty nice, too. You know what I'm saying? They got some dogs on their team. So uh, we just got to see, man. We just got to see what they do. I'm, I'm, I can't wait to watch both games, bro. It's going to be exciting basketball to watch this weekend. Man, for sure. Uh, the so in the Alabama UConn game, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go with UConn. Uh, simply because, man, they've been beating people to sleep. Like they, they, they are not playing around in this tournament. I mean, games that I watch, they not, they not playing with their food like we did against Yale. They are coming out and they're getting they're ending these games early. Um well coached team. Um I will say this watch Alabama. You, you're talking about number one scoring team in the nation. They shoot the ball well, they play at a pace that's crazy. Um they can get a little reckless at times, but I'm watching them in this tournament defend like I've never seen them defend all year. Like they haven't defended this like this all year. Um, you got to remember, we're talking about a team that didn't win a game, them or Kentucky didn't win a game in the SEC championship. So to be able to turn it on in the NCAA tournament like that is a complete flip of the switch from what we've seen from this team all year. That's why it's so shocking. Um, but this UConn team is a well coached team, man. And I'll say this if it gets to if it gets in the 90s, 90s and above, I think Alabama has a shot. But anything lower than that, I think UConn wins. And, and, and I'm gonna go with UConn on this, but that's gonna be an exciting game to watch. It's not gonna be boring at all. The game that I'm most excited to see though is Purdue and North Carolina State because I want to see. Zach Eady versus DJ Barnes. That is the matchup I want to see. I, I don't know what kind of prospect Eady is, but this is probably going to be one of the best skilled big men that big men that he's played in this tournament for sure. Well, if you hadn't seen DJ Barnes play, please tune into this game. This this he has game. He has game. He reminds Maybe me of. Zemo. Yeah, they, they call him they call him Gen Zebo. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Gen Zebo. He reminds me of um was it Kenny Lofton's son? Yeah. Uh, he played for Memphis. He played for the Grizzlies. What's his oh, name? They got some dogs on their team. Well, I'm about to say, uh, Zebo played for Memphis. No, 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 I'm talking about. Dude, he got drafted last year. Oh, played, yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot yeah, his yeah. name. But he was Lofton Jr. Yeah, that's Ken Lofton Jr. Yeah, duh. Yeah. <laughs> I like Ken yeah. Lofton. Just a big, a big fellow with game, man. Like, uh, you watch DJ Burns. He's he's offensive now. Defensively, I don't know if he's 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 that skill, but offensively, man, he has it. And uh, Zach Eady. This is a guy who's got to prove himself. They had two early exits back to back. You know, this is the first they, they, they were supposed to be here last year. If you've been tracking this team, but they they always seem to lose, you know, in untimely moments. So they I, I feel like Purdue has more to prove in this situation. It's gonna be an interesting game, though, man. It's gonna be a very interesting game. Uh, but I'm gonna go with North Carolina State to win that. And uh North Carolina State, you come. In a championship, my team lost, so <laughs> I'm gonna go for the underdog. I'm gonna go with North Carolina State, the 11 seed, and come and pull a major upset and uh, win them a national championship against a traditional power. That's what I'm gonna go with. So we got we got Alabama, we got UConn, we got NC State. Somebody got to be right. Hell, it may even be Purdue. We all be wrong. <laughs> but 
hey, we going to find out Monday night on that one. And for one of the last topics of the night, ladies and gentlemen, top five women's college basketball players since 2000. Very, very tough list. I tried to warn these guys, like, this is going to be a very, very tough list. Even when you say, oh, she going to automatically be on there, she going to be automatically on there. Then you start thinking about, oh, damn. Damn, I can't leave her off. Damn, I can't leave her off. So I think mine is just pretty much set in my head. So <laughs> and if I forgot anybody, I apologize. Because this is extremely hard. But Maya Moore is on my list. Diana Taurasi on my list. Brianna Stewart. So the three UConn women, sorry, not sorry. Brittany Griner, because of how dominant she was. It was just like, can't leave Brittany Griner off. Now I say Candace Parker. That is in no order, by the way. This is just reeling off name. This is not no order. Now, these guys may have them in order, but for mine, it wasn't no order. So, for me, oh. I got <clears throat> I got Brittany Griner, straight up out there, H-Town, you know what I'm saying? Uh, she from Houston? Yeah, 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 man. I knew Brittany, she was from Texas, but I didn't know she was from That's old nine, man, shit. I remember seeing her when I was in high school. Oh, so, yeah, she was uh, on that. You got Brittany, man. I'm put Caitlin Clark in this one of the greatest shooters I've ever Jeez. seen. Uh, definitely going with Maya Moore, Candace Parker, and uh, I'm gonna throw Tarasi in there, man. Tarasi definitely, you know. So who you left off my list? That I'm trying to figure out. You didn't say Caitlin. I know. I said you left somebody out. I'm trying to see. I put. Oh, you left Brianna Stewart out. That's tough. <laughs> That's tough. Yeah, I know. That's tough. I can yeah. keep going, bro. It. I don't. Know. And the crazy thing about it, like when she won her first championship, like the goal was, and I think I remember they were saying, "I'm gonna have to watch it on YouTube." Just remember, but I think they were saying like uh, she was trying. Her goal was to win like four straight. Mm. that's a hell of a goal and you were thinking about doing that your freshman year and you actually accomplished that that is like amazing dog <laughs> like she had the women's game on lock True. for real right. four straight four uh most outstanding players i highly doubt we'll ever see that again ever yeah, see that probably again. not but what you got for me, Ken? Man, this is tough. <laughs> so, first, just to get it out of the way, it was, it was whether Caitlin Clark is on my list or not. And I'm going to say yes. So, first name is Caitlin Clark. We put Caitlin Clark on my list because I think she's one of the top five players since 2005, for sure. I mean, 2000, for sure. Uh, next, I got Diana Tarazi. Uh Next, I got Maya Moore. This is where it get tough right here. Ooh. <laughs> I definitely want to put, I got to put, you got to put Brianna Stewart in there. And then at five, mm -hmm. You know what? I'm gonna go out on the limb. I'm gonna uh -oh. go with my original pick. I'm gonna just to shake it up. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Sabrina UNESCO. Ain't no way. <laughs> Ain't no way she ahead of um, 
uh, Brittany Griner. I know it. I know it. She not ahead of <laughs> half of the other people I got on this list. <laughs> just bro, it's just it's and it's so many, bro. It's so many. <laughs> Even people that it's so hard for the women, bro. You got Renee Montgomery, you got Swin Kelsey Cash, Plum. Kelsey Plum. It's, it, like that's what I'm saying. It's like, Odyssey Films. So many. Oh my God, bro. The names just started to roll off. I mean, Candace Wiggins. That mean crush on Candace Wiggins. It was Maya Moore and Candace Wiggins. Skylar Diggins. Skylar Diggins yeah. up there. Oh man. I put you next right. on there solely because of her relationship with Kobe. No other reason. Yeah. Bro, it's like the women's game, bro. Of course, Caitlin up there. If that was if Caitlin wins, dog, she's definitely on my top five list. Yeah. And if it would be a person I'll knock off. I probably knock off Candace, and that's saying a lot only because Candace had a squad too, but she played at Tennessee yeah. when Pat Summit was like still alive and she was in her prime. It was just like UConn, Tennessee. Who just make your pick? Who's gonna be this year? Right. But um, and to be honest, that's why Gino is far ahead in the goat conversation because he dominated. Uh, right. Tennessee, but but this this whole exercise in, in trying to come up with these five players bro, is one of the reasons why uh, I had to uh, initially we started to give uh, Angel Reese some credit because there's there's been stars in the women's game. Like a lot of people talk about why why people are watching the women's game now. The first thing they mention is star power. Which is true, but there's always been stars in the women's game. I, but I the only that. the only thing, bro, is just the these same people. This this is why I'm going to say this right now. Like it's just a drama. Yeah, and at this, that, I mean, it's not because of basketball. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, Her marketability outside of basketball has brought attention to it in a way that it hasn't been for been before. And it, I mean, it's drama. You know, I don't like it, but some mm -hmm. people love it. <laughs> it's a reality show to them, man. We Tina Charles, they were like, bro. I could have put Skylar in my top five, though. Skylar Cole, bro. Bro, it's so many. Like, when I seen Odyssey Sims, bro, I was just like, bro. I, I just started reeling up. I'm like, bro, I'm about to get a headache because I'm going to forget some people, and I'm going to feel so bad. So, so do we all agree on Diana, Brianna, and Maya Moore? Is that a, do, do we all have those? I think that's a lot. You can't lead those three off. Yeah, so man. We're we talking about four and five now. You could, and yeah. I think that's it, bro. I think that's an automatic lock on that. Like, you cannot lead those three off. Because what Diana did, like, yeah, you can't lead Diana off. It's just like crazy, like all of them, like freshmen. I ain't, Candace Parker was the same way, but it's just like I don't know, bro. It's like they was a movement. <laughs> like when Sue Bird and Swim Cash went to like the NBA, it was like the next year. Nobody had UConn winning, and Diana Taurus carried them to the national championship. Like she is like she can be considered the goat of basketball only because of her M WNBA career. I believe if we had to put like a Mount Rushmore or just women's uh, basketball players, Sharon Miller's up there, Cynthia Cooper. Of course. Oh, Cheryl. Uh, See, no, nah, I'm see. Oh my god, no, you know what? We're gonna say that one I'm because it's so hard. Because I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, once he said it's cool, and then I was like, no, nah, I ain't gotta be up there. And I was like, no, nah, Lisa Leslie gotta be Lisa up there. Leslie. I'm like, hey, we we gonna have the next week that's gonna be the, 
one of the main ones, bro. So give folks time to like really, really figure out. And I hope everybody's up here. And hopefully we got some uh uh folks that want to come in and uh show love to the pod. But that one is definitely gonna be that one for like the women's game, period. Like who's on that Mount Rushmore? Look at this boy right here. Look at him. Got the sign <laughs> show. <laughs> Well, you know she. Yeah, I got it. I got it signed back in the day with Swoops on. Man, that's dope. Yes. And that's and that's the thing. I need all women to support the women's game. It's not men are going to support it regardless. And True. that's why the one thing that I hate about a lot of WNBA players stop pushing the male audience away from you yep stop because it's just like some of them just like i i can't even remember shouting name that when andre Iguodala just said i see you two or whatever number she was and she get on social media like when she see it, like anybody see some mess like that. What if uh I said Kobe, Kobe my just say if I had the number five and Kobe just wrote on Twitter, I see you five. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, oh yeah, I remember that. Kobe Bryant said, What's up to me, bro? But this girl literally lost her mind, bro. Ain't gonna try to like my name is such said such. you could have just looked it up. Look at all that I'm like. Bro, who doing all that? Then she tried to bring up old stuff, like trying to ruin his career or whatnot. Like, bro, I thought that was the most sucker. Oh, I don't even want. I don't even want to end it like that, man. Because I'm just like, bro, you pushing a lot of the supporters that guys that normally watch you guys. Because clearly, the women not watching y'all at all, and these are facts. Sad. They they rather watch. Real Housewives of Atlanta before they watch out. They rather go to a Real Housewives convention before they come to any game. Yeah. Or a blue face reality show. <laughs> or a blue face reality show. I'm telling you, that's why it's so entertaining this year. Because of the drama. If it wasn't for so, that drama, man, wouldn't nobody be paying attention to it like that for so, real. So, but as always, man, we we came to the end of the show. Gotta let the guys show the show love for what they got going on. Appreciate you guys as always. And we got ourselves a big sports weekend full of uh great basketball. But I'm gonna start it off with Ted and we're gonna get up out of here. Nah. Proto imagery. Same spot. Same things. Appreciate you for having me again, man. Been a pleasure. Uh, looking forward to the post Final Four episode. Uh, should be pretty interesting. Guys, like you said, got some good basketball coming up. Uh, Don't see you look like a genius. Yeah. That's why I picked the underdog, man, because if they win, that they made me look like a genius. Yep. <laughs> That's how I be. <laughs> And I'm going to say I said it the whole year. <laughs> now that's going to be big cap. <laughs> now that's the cap. I'll be I've been like, told so. I've been told so. <laughs> Oh, boy, you know how they are. You know how they are, boy. The biggest lies ever, boy. Boy, I'm like, the best way I'd be like, man, show me a Facebook post. Show me. Somebody got to validate it. You got to show me. I've been on NC State since 88. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, you already know what it is, man. We do this every week, man. It's your boy. Follow me on all social media platforms right down here, man. Yeah, we doing this every week. Every week. Good shows, great shows, great commentary. You know how we get down. Go Braves. We win the championship this year. You know how we doing it. Let's get it. I got to give me a ring. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brinsky Shaw. We drop every Wednesday. Always uh, make sure y'all come check us out. 
definitely on the road to uh, 500 to uh, 500 subscribers. Shout out to uh, Quint and Arlon. They couldn't be here tonight. Quint uh, was traveling back home and Arlon got to represent all these people trying to keep them up out of jail. And we sure appreciate that. Appreciate you, brother. But I'm going to make sure they had a pits in to I'm going to make sure they sent it in. I should have had them uh, do all this before the show started. But I'm going to make sure they send their picks to me tonight before all the game, before they tell a lie and say, oh, I had this team winning and that team winning. Oh, I look like a genius. Nope. I'm going to be well prepared for that, ladies and gentlemen. So don't worry about that. But as always and forever, I'm rooting for the tide. We going out there. We were trying to shock the world this weekend. And I pray to God it happen come Monday night. I hope we playing Monday night. And I hope we'll be uh, raising a different banner in Alabama. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, fuck Auburn. Roll damn.